It's March 28, 2024. This is Rook. Well, hi there. Welcome to episode 316 of Rook. I'm Gian Gomeshi. Hello to you from Toronto. Hello to you from Canada. Sunny Canada. Salam dustan aziz. Durud bashuma. I hope you're doing well wherever you are tuning in from around the world. Hi, Smart Pega. Hello. Nice to see you. I am so excited to put this episode mm-hmm. out. I really am. Yes. I really am because uh, this is uh, this episode includes features. Um, uh, a long form in depth interview with a living legend, mm-hmm. Chapel Chaparre, an interview that was done about a, we did it about a week ago or mm-hmm. a little over a week ago, I should say, here in the Rook studio. So I know the contents already. It's not like uh, <laughs> usually when we start the show, the interview is going to be coming yes. up and we hope it goes well. Um, I, I must say, this is really one of my favorite interviews I've, I've done. Wow. Uh, yeah, I just, I first of all, what a gracious, wonderful, generous, um, living legend mm-hmm. he is. Chapo, Chaparre, of course, from Black Cat's fame. And yes. by the way, the interview is with him, and then he's joined by a couple of his young, uh, new, the new black recruits, cats. the yeah. new Black Cats, yeah, including, spoiler alert, <laughs> the first woman to ever sing officially with Black Cat, mm-hmm. to be a member, uh, a young woman. So they will be part of the interview, but... But he is, let's put him in the category of an icon who, he's 84 years old. Wow. And I know that he doesn't mind me saying that because we talk about age in mm-hmm. this interview. And he has the wisdom of an 84-year-old, um, but the grace of someone who, uh, I mean, it's so gratifying to meet and speak to uh, an icon mm-hmm. who is as modest and giving and generous as he is. He came into the studio. He'd flown overnight to be here, came into the studio. We did, The interview was like a couple of hours uh-huh. long. I think we've cut it down a little bit to an hour and a half, uh, including the, uh, the, the band members who mm-hmm. come in as well. Uh, and he's just giving, and it is, now check this out. He has been outside of Iran for about 40 years mm-hmm. right um he's he formed black cats 65 years ago wow right black cats originally sang in english mm-hmm. chapel chaperre studied in england mm-hmm. his english is impeccable this is the first long form this is the first real interview right. he's ever done in english um so that's an honor and it, and i also feel uh, it's very important to be able to introduce someone like this to non-Persian mm-hmm. speaking folks as well, including some second and third generation Iranians, That's right? right? Who get to hear Shapal, who of course is completely fluent in English and works with English artists sometimes, mm-hmm. et cetera. Um, boy, is he amazing. And boy, is his story a crazy one. I mean, how many, how many bands have sustained 65 <laughs> years let alone through a revolution and war yeah. and all of that, right? Well, it's funny you're saying that, and I'm a Black Cats fan. Like, I've, I've grown up listening to the music and things like that, and I didn't realize that Black Cats have been around for that long. Nor did I realize that Shahbon is 84. Like, these things are, you Shahbol. know... Shahbon. Yeah. I, not not, not Shahbon. No, Shahbon. I said Shahbon. Okay. <laughs> Nor did I realize that, that he's 84. I mean... You know, he like you said, he's so incredible. Black Cats has always been a big part of music, Iranian music, and so lots of energy. He's in young, he's in touch with youth. I mean, mm-hmm. one of one of the things I want to talk to him about is how he's kept his fingers, his his sense, his tentacles, his <laughs> his antenna uh, in touch with what's going mm-hmm. on in music. Because one of the reasons why Black Cats has stayed relevant is, I mean, they had hits through the two thousands, right? Because he brings in the new you know he finds amazing talent he lets them take the stage mm-hmm. they lets them front the band he doesn't always need to be the guy in the front <laughs> um he is he is uh it's such a testament to 
um, I don't know, what be, good karma or something. You know, this guy who's just given back to others. Mm-hmm. Nobody has a bad word to say about him. He's he's such a a, a giving, wonderful, generous um, soul. Mm-hmm. It, you'll hear it in this interview. And at the same time, uh, a legend of, of Persian music who, who really kind of helped define what the new era of Persian pop music is. Mm-hmm. You know, he, in L.A., Black Cats were the were trailblazers to a certain Absolutely. extent, right? Um, and then, and then, of course, the roster of artists he's worked with, back to his days in Iran with Fad Hod mm-hmm. and Ebi and his brother Shahram Shapare, and then moving to the West and Kamran and Human mm-hmm. and and Kamyar and Sam Beki and you know on and on and on, right? Absolutely, it's I don't I can't even remember which one of the Black Cats is my favorite now because they're all good. As you're naming these names, I'm mm. like, well, I've listened to all of them and they're all equally great. Well. If you, if you, if you're just tuning in right now and and you don't know that much about Shafal Shafat or you're not uh, a huge Black Cats uh, obsessive or something mm-hmm. like that, do stick around. Listen to this interview yes. because this guy, it is it, he is he has so much wisdom to impart and so much grace, and I I, I must I keep saying that, but I'm I'm just so grateful that mm-hmm. he was here. And I've said this before, and I don't want to um, suggest that he's uh, you know senior, but but. <laughs> I, whenever somebody asks me, uh, who who would you love to interview? Mm-hmm. Who is the ideal, you know? I always say, the oldest person you can possibly bring me. <laughs> because I love older folks, mm-hmm. because they've lived, they have experience, they know the world, they have opinions, and also they kind of don't give a shit. They're willing to speak their truth, <laughs> right? Which he does in this interview. Yeah, and I'm sure he's got stories to share. Oh. We could we scratch the surface. I mean, this is a great. I feel really good about sharing this interview, mm-hmm. but I could have spoken to him for days. <laughs> Shapa Shapare, Black Cats, coming up in just a few moments. We'll give you that interview um, in the midst of uh, Noruz. Noruz, first of all, Noruz is like seven weeks or something. I'm like, <laughs> like Noruz <laughs> is still days, people are still saying Happy Noruz, and I'm yes. like, wasn't that two weeks ago? Didn't <laughs> I do a gala? three weeks ago and then last weekend and the weekend before it. it's because we have so many celebrations but it's great it's wonderful it's like I guess it's so. ongoing we were, technically we're only eight days post noruz right oh we, eight are or we post noruz now finally yeah. right. well no it's it's still ongoing we're still part of the 13 <laughs> okay. days of celebrations right. but we're right. only eight days into it okay well lots more celebrating happy noruz happy noruz <laughs> one thing i didn't talk to shapa shapa about mm-hmm. and i want to say this up front because the interview was done, I think it was Tuesday of last week. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was Wednesday of last week that we found out the really, really um, saddening and maddening news of uh, the loss of our dear Farmer Aslani, mm-hmm. the Iranian icon, a friend of our program, friend of mine, uh, who I dare say, uh, who was the best mm-hmm. uh, and um, of course we dedicated our program programming to him last week um, so this interview with Shah Ball was done right before that happened yeah. otherwise and I want to say that because if I were to be listening to this interview and thinking it was today I'd be like well the guy's not going to ask about Farimaz Aslani mm-hmm. you know who of course Shah Ball knew and had I've since spoken to him and obviously he's very saddened by this news as, as well um, but that's why there's no conversation about Far- actually Faramaris comes up in the interview but not as someone who's uh, you can't you can't do a story of the history of, uh, of Iranian, Iranian pop music, music without yeah. Faramaris Aslani so his name actually comes up but um, but uh, that's why there's no questions around him now um, I must say we've been overwhelmed by the mm-hmm. response to the tribute stuff that we did for Faramaris Aslani that um, I did a tribute essay, and mm-hmm. we did an episode about him. We we replayed some of w- one of our old interviews with him, and we had an interview with um, Yasmin Pahlavi as well. Mm-hmm. And um, it's the first time our show has done about uh, 1.5 million streams in f- six days. Mm-hmm. Uh, 1.5 million wow. streams. So this is not like somebody clicking on an Instagram or something. This is listening to our program, you know, yeah. and, and these interviews. And so... Um, I think that is uh, um, certainly uh, in part a testament to the mm-hmm. love for Faramaz Aslani, right? He, he, and you see it elsewhere. You see, you know, it's been a few days of, of uh, at least in the Persian media space, 
uh, ongoing tributes and thoughts and and um, sharing of, of condolences and sadness uh, about this incredible icon that we mm-hmm. lost. And, you know, we touched upon this last week when we did our, our programming and our tribute to him, and we mentioned that we had n- we had never seen a situation where um, there is an Iranian musician, artist, or anyone else for that matter who has passed, and there isn't at least one or two negative comments or yeah. things like that made. And now, having you know, ha- it being a couple of days since the tragic passing of Farmer's last Sunday, we still haven't seen anything like that. Uh, I've seen a few. Really? Yeah. I haven't. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I Listen, was. People. You know, I. He I, was like, people. You know, yeah, I mean, just nonsense. Really. Yeah. But I mean, I guess labeling it's, it's so politically little. labeling him or whatever. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's so minimal that you know. So minimal. So minimal. And and, and the point that I was trying to make yeah. is that you know this this really shows you just how loved he was by everyone universally. Absolutely. It was the dignity and integrity with which he lived his life, and the truth in who he was, and mm-hmm. and and in the music that he um, created. It's real. It's and it's just him, and you know. I did this in that I talked about this in that tribute essay that that and and we've talked about it last week and I talked about it with the Asma Pahlavi this this is a man who defied doing what he could what what the blueprint was to get really famous and make mm-hmm. shit, shitloads of money in the Persian media spa, Persian music space instead he lived by his own artistic true to path himself, yeah. and uh Wow, what a role model, mm-hmm. right? And the stories that I see from you know people all over social media and things like that. There's all these comments that I've seen about um, you know people sharing the stories that the memories and the stories that they have because of his music. Yeah. It's just it's so heartwarming and it really it leaves a mark on you. I mean, some of the stories I've read about um, family members, loved ones, loss, all sorts of things, and all yeah. with the backdrop of his music. Yeah. By the Incredible. way, speaking of fam- family members. It meant a lot to me mm-hmm. to have uh, Marajan, his his wife, uh, yes. um, collapse share the essay, mm-hmm. and 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 his two daughters uh, posted really wonderful notes, including one um, one of them who's saying, uh, "Thank you for doing this in English yes, because they that. want you know they also want people to know Farmer's Aslani beyond the Iranian community as they should." So. Um, so I'm going to go to D.C. this weekend, mm-hmm. uh, Washington, D.C. There's going to be a tribute memorial to him mm-hmm. on Sunday. Uh, I'll be there, and and quite frankly, I really want to be there. There's a bunch of friends there, a lot of people from the music commu- uh, community going there. Um, and let's celebrate Faram Raz Aslani, which we should do forever. I mean, we the job is now to us. Mm-hmm. By the way, uh, he loved love. He loved music. He loved freedom. He loved Iran, mm-hmm. and he loved journalism. He was a journalist, yeah. right? Yes. So I mean, uh, now we got to carry the torch for him and make sure that Farmer Aslani's w- who and what he was will never be forgotten mm-hmm. uh, beyond the incredible music. That's right, and I, honestly, from the outpour of love and support, I don't think that he ever will be. Let's make a let's make a, a deal that we never <laughs> let that happen. All right. Shapo Shapare, Black Cat's coming up. So excited to bring you this in just a few moments. But first, this episode, Pega, <laughs> has been made possible by a couple of excellent supporters. Mm-hmm. Bid Meshk events. Bid Meshk. Bid Meshk, Pega. <laughs> Not the easiest word to say in English. Bid Meshk. Is it easier to say in Persian? Bid Meshk. Bid Meshk. Bid Meshk Bid Meshk yes. <laughs> Bid Meshk events. Uh, they have specialized in event planning in the greater Toronto area. Their full party service saves you the time and stress of pulling everything together yourself. So you got an event, mm-hmm. you want Bid Meshk events. Fully decorated tables to stunning flower and balloon displays, even your food and drink all sorted for you. Just imagine all of your lovely memories of a fun-filled party, Pega, without all the organization. Whether planning a magnificent wedding, a fun birthday party, a surprising engagement event, or an entertaining corporate event, they are there every step of the journey. Journey, Bead Meshk events. And by the way, Bead Meshk have a Noruz Gala. Yes, they do. That which was, you attended. Which I may have attended. I may have even hosted. <laughs> That's right. Uh, thank you to Beat Meshk Events for their generous uh, sponsorship and involvement um, in also bringing Black Cats to mm-hmm. to Toronto. And Roomy Mode. 
Roomy mode. Have you heard of roomy mode, Pega? I've heard, but I, does roomy mode have anything for me or is it men's? It's men's. Men's only. That's I what think, I thought. I have to ask. But I think, uh, but you look fancy. Uh, you look good in one of those blazers. <laughs> this is a new, exclusive, excellent clothing brand and designer located here in the greater Toronto area as well. So people listening around the world, you can still tune in and find out about, you know, roomy mode. I, I imagine you could probably order something order online. online. Why yeah. not? Now, I'm not going to lie. I've been to the showroom in mm -hmm. Richmond Hill. The suits and clothing are exquisite. They are unique, Pega. I bet. Roomy mode. <laughs> and the best of all, it's got roomy in it. The word right. room, who doesn't <laughs> like roomy? No one. Right. Rumi Mo is the clothing line of Mo Ajman. Mo was, Mo was born in Tehran in the late 70s and uh, discovered his passion for modeling and clothing by the time he was in his teens. He founded the popular Jest suit brand in Tehran mm. at the age of 25 and in 2018 made his journey to Canada. Thereafter, uh, has introduced the Rumi brand to the market here. This is uh, trailblazing, unique stuff. It's a really, really great clothing. Uh, you really want to check out the showroom in Richmond Hill if you are ever in the area. Black cats who are on this show mm -hmm. were wearing roomy, roomy mode, mode at their show here in Toronto, as was uh, Mazier Falahi when he performed at Rook Live. Mm -hmm. You might remember he mentioned yes. roomy mode. Check out roomy mode on Young Street in Richmond Hill if you're in the greater Toronto area. Mo Arjman uh, or on Instagram and I guess their website, roomymode.ca. You could go and ask if there's... I will. I'm going to ask. But you can wear a jacket. Uh, yeah, yeah, why not? Blazer. Rock star kind of jacket. Exactly. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Roomymode.ca. Thank you for your support. And we're coming to you on rookmedia.com. It's there that you can link to all of our platforms. We are on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Instagram, CastBox. If you like to see some visuals with Rook, switch over to YouTube right now. And if you like your Rook descriptions of bulletins in English and in Persian, check us out on Telegram. And you can support us by going to our website, rookmedia.com, hitting the support us button, and it'll take you to the Patreon page mm -hmm. where you can become a Rook member. That's right. Become a patron. Patron on Patreon. Patron on Patreon. Right? Yes, that's right. You become right. a patron, but the thing is called Patreon. It is. It's also it's a little confusing, <laughs> but you can support us. You can support us. That's all that matters. Um, are you ready? I am. All right. Very ready. Feature guest today is an Iranian icon who has left an indelible mark on the Persian pop music scene. When I talk about this person being the spine of Persian popular music for the last seven decades, it is not hyperbole. His moniker is literally the pop father. He truly is a treasure. Take a listen to this. Infectious sound. Little taste of Juna Chodet from about 14 years ago. A massive hit for Kamiar with Black Cats, a beloved group that has been the brainchild and creation for decades of my feature guest today, Shahbal Shapareh. 
Black Cats have always been known for their catchy tunes and energetic performances. Founded by the talented Shah Ball, the band first emerged in the 1960s. They started by covering songs from English artists such as the Beatles, James Brown, Ray Charles, and the Rolling Stones. And Black Cats immediately caught attention with band members that we now know as Iranian music icons like Fad Hod, Ebi, and Hassan Shamizadeh. Then the 1979 revolution occurred and changed everything, prompting Shah Bal to eventually leave Iran, first to Europe and then permanently to the United States. There he once again formed the Black Cats Band and not only created classic hit songs in Persian music, but did so with a vision to nurturing young artists from Piruz and Kamran and Human to Kamyar to Sam Begi. The Black Cats released a string of hit singles and albums solidifying their status as one of the most influential Persian music groups of their time. They are still at it in a big way with an exciting new lineup. And so is the Ostad present, the maestro, the legendary musician, songwriter, producer, and band leader. It is an honor to welcome Shahbal Shapere to the Rook Studio. Hello, sir. Thank you for this. Uh, actually better than I could say it myself. <laughs> you know everything about my band. Well, I, I, I can't wait to learn more from you in this interview, but it really is an honor uh, to have you here. Thank, thank you, you for doing this. Thank you for, uh, for just giving me the chance to say things that I haven't said so far anywhere. I look forward to that. Uh, but, okay. And by the way, You've been outside of Iran for over four decades. Yes. Your English is immaculate, but you haven't done a lot of, in fact, you've done no major English interviews. No. It is a great honor to do that, and I hope this interview carries you to people who wouldn't normally see you if they don't speak Persian or, or haven't been watching the Farsi networks. Uh, actually, I did my young studies in London, uh, 1957. I was, I think, 18, 19 years in old. In cinema. You were studying no, cinema. Right? Yes. Yeah. Well, my father, because he was in film business, so he sent me to London to follow up his path. Yes. But when I got back to Iran, I saw film industry, Persian film industry, really not the thing that I would do for the rest of my life. So I asked my dad, can I go back and finish my music in the conservatory of Persian, uh, actually national Iranian uh, con uh, conservatory. <laughs> conservatory, yeah. Uh, yes. So what I did, I finished my studies in music and went to Iranian National Symphony Orchestra. So that was when I thought, okay, there is something missing in Persian music. And I thought, now the Beatles, that was the same timing almost. Yeah. That's in 1960. Yeah. The Beatles started, and uh, that's the time I came back to Iran. And by the way, even when you were in England studying cinema ostensibly going into a career that would be cinema a theater that type of thing um i i think i heard you say at some point that you were still uh, at nights you would go to clubs and watch bands play, every and you would you would just want to play music that e was your thing e every every night i was going there and i ask them beg them hmm. look no matter how much money you want i can pay you just to play just a touch but they wouldn't let me and, and your main thing at that time was a, you were a drummer. That's your uh, first instrument, right? Yes, that's my first instrument. But actually, that was my own taste to pick up on this uh, instrument. But uh, I was the percussion player in symphony orchestra. Right. And then I started doing the first Persian rock band. And that was because... I knew the Beatles, as you said, James Brown, the Stones, you know, the all, Stones of, yeah. all this. Uh, there were many groups coming yeah. out after the Beatles. 
but my favorite was Beatles. I love this. I love that you're the guy that many people associate with, in some cases, a, a distinct Persian pop sound, or some people call it the LA sound, or the Shisha Hashed and all that. But you're actually a guy who was also weaned on British rock and roll. Exactly. Right? It, it, and it, it's such an interesting juxtaposition. It, um, I, let me let me take three steps back, actually, mm -hmm. because um, as we were starting the interview, I want to say you were on time today, um, <laughs> even though you were flying overnight. Yeah. From what I understand, you're always on time. Always. You you don't have the Persian. The rest of us. The, <laughs> <laughs> the Persian DNA, like you can't even probably start your concerts on time because the crowd wouldn't be there. Why? How were you able to buck this trend of lateness that Persians all, all have? Actually, uh, it's a little abnormal if you go otherwise, meaning that we know we're always late, <laughs> always. Yes. Look, like if they invite you to a party, say eight o'clock. And then it means that you leave your house at eight o'clock. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so at the earliest. I mean, at, you should probably go later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but by the way, that it's weirder to me as someone who grew up in the West. Like I remember, I've told this story before, but about twenty years ago, I, I interviewed a band called Ariane Band, uh -huh. and it was there. They were this. They were making a lot of noise because it was the first time the mixed genders were performing together in Iran, and right. they came on a tour to Canada, and I interviewed them, and I they were playing that night at the Sony Center at 8 p.m., and I brought my friend who was also non-Iranian, uh, you know, and we walked in at 8 p.m. There was nobody there, and we thought, well, oh my God, maybe I have the wrong night, and I started asking the ushers, is Ariane Band playing tonight? And they said, yeah, yeah, and the ticket says <laughs> 8 o'clock. That's and very like normal. And then 9.30, Iranians, like, somehow Iranians also don't even know. They know that what time it's, they come in around 9.30, the show started around 10 p.m. I mean, it was the weirdest thing on a ticketed event for me to see that, you know, everybody kind of understood that nothing's gonna start on time, you know. No, we're used to it, actually. But the pop father is on time. Yes, and my members of the band. And that's, is that a professional rule you have? Yes, hmm. very, no, I'm very strict on that. <laughs> I ask them, if you come late, you better not come at all. Wow. That's serious. And, that's serious. And, 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 and I mean, it, it, it's self-evident, but tell me why that's so important to you. But it worked with me. Right. You've never fired anybody no, for being late. No, because Kamiar didn't turn up five minutes late to no, a nobody. <laughs> Actually, no. I tell you, maybe it sounds funny, but it happened. Uh, like one of my musicians, Shubert Avakian. Yeah, everybody knows him. He's been on this program. Like, he was always calling me, say Shabaljan, our flight is on Tuesday, is not on Monday, so please don't go to the airport Monday. One day earlier, <laughs> so uh, meaning that you meaning that you're so committed to being on time yes. that you sometimes even go the day earlier. Yes. Wow. Because music is really so serious in my life. Huh. Uh, I always talk to my wife and daughter. I said, "You have a challenge with only one thing in life. You always lose to that. So never challenge with that." You know, and you, that's music. You're, you're such a, a role model. You're such a professional. And I, I, I can't, I don't even normally do this in my interviews. It's, it's gush over someone in the beginning. But I have to say, you've been referenced so many times on this program. Um, Kamiar has talked about you. Schubert in our interview. Rana Mansour talked about you. Babak Amini talked about you. And what they talk about is that you're not just a legend, but you have made a career about lifting up others. And I was watching, I don't, I don't know how old this interview was, at some point you were saying, you were speaking in Persian, you said that, that uh, God once told me that, that if you find someone who's doing something better than you can do it, let them take the stage and support them. 
it's such a beautiful idea, but it's actually um, counterintuitive, especially someone who is known as an icon. You must know you have that status. It wouldn't be a surprise if you walked around like, hey, I'm the guy, you know, the rest of you have to support me. When did you develop that philosophy of I'm going to support, I'm going to use my platform to support others? Exactly. That happened very early in my career. I found that there are some others better than me. So I said, why not push them so they can push others? Like it happened like this, just by itself. As soon as I started living drumming, I said, look, I was one of the best drummers ever in Iran at the time mm. when I started mm. for, for I think like eight, nine years, nobody could match me back in Iran. But after seven, eight years, it just happened to me. I went to a family gathering and then I heard sound of drum. Somebody is playing drum the next room to the party. So I go, I open the door, I see my cousin, <laughs> like 14 years old. He is killing the drum. That's exactly, uh, I'm very serious about this. Mm. I'm not kidding. So I asked him, when did you start playing the drums? He said, he said, sorry, Shabal John, sorry. Uh, I, I don't want to touch drums in front of you. I said, you're 10 times better than me. What are you talking about? And that's when I thought to myself, Shabal, if you want to stay in the business, you better do something that others don't do hmm. in Persian music. So I started just leave space for others. When I quit drumming, I brought another drummer who played better than me. I went on percussion. When I find somebody better than me on percussion, I said, okay, what I do, I write songs. When I find somebody playing and making better songs, I got their songs into the play. It's incredibly wise. It's also very selfless. And I wonder where where your ego fits in. Because I, I don't believe, I mean, you can't not have an ego. To be a band leader, to be a guy who's done all the things you do, obviously you need to have an ego. So how do you negotiate that with yourself. No, I'll let this guy play the drums even though I know I could do it, but maybe he's a bit better. I take more pleasure out of it. Believe me, it's not only just doing something worthwhile for others. No, it gives me so much pleasure and satisfaction, actually. Now, what I say about Black Cats, just imagine comparing Rolling Stones mm -hmm with black cats. Now, there is one thing that you can see it happens with both bands. Mick Jagger is exactly my age. Hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, the funny thing, black cats still are using their name as black cats. Mm -hmm. with different members. Yes. yes. Not the same members. Yes. Even how many times the main singer have been changed. Yes. But Black Cats uh, shined again. Yes. Still after 65 years. But I wouldn't compare it to the Rolling Stones, actually. I, I think, and I've been, I've been thinking about this and meditating on this, and I'm not, I'm not even being, I'm not exaggerating. The, the, the black cats idea, you see, I think in the Iranian, the global Iranian community, we sort of know black cats, we accept black cats. It's actually an audacious idea. It doesn't make sense. And the reason <laughs> it's different, it really doesn't. I can't think of another group 
in, in I grew up in English music, in Western rock music. I can't think of a group like Black Cats. If there is a group that's been around that long, like like the Beach Boys are still touring, but they're a pale imitation of what they were. There's like one old guy, some young people. Nobody really thinks, respects what they've become. The Stones are still at it, and yes. God God love them, but they're not. They're not writing hit songs. They're not still relevant. Black Cats has actually stayed relevant this whole time. And that to me is that, in other words, you don't just keep going. You also keep going so that 19 year olds are listening to your music, right? (laughs) So that to me is a testament to you and your ability to, like in English, English we'd say, read the room. Like you somehow have been able to keep in touch with what's going on. You yeah. pick the right people, you've got the right kids around you, whatever it is, and I want you to tell me what it is, that you've been able to keep Black Cats relevant. It doesn't sound like, oh yeah, that band from the 90s or from the 60s, it's it's still an ongoing thing, and everyone accepts it and loves it. Tell yeah. me how you do it. Well, well, just imagine comparing Black Cats right now with the Stones, with Rolling Stones. Just imagine Mick Jagger leaves the Stones. Mm. What would happen? But there's no Stones. That's it. Yeah. With Black Cats, it's not like that. The main singer, somebody like Farhat, leaves. You would think he's indispensable, <laughs> but, yeah. he, but he exactly. wasn't. Yeah, yeah. When he left, Black Cats, still Black Cats, with mm. another singer. Nobody knew who that is. But how do you stay in touch with musical trends? Like, how do you know what's still cool? And I mean, what's still going to be accepted on Radio Javon or something? You know. Well, I'm 84 now. 84. I was 18 when I started. <laughs> what I did, I started looking the business by the eyes of young ones. Mm. I heard music with the ears of young ones. Like all around me, now, even today, Mm -hmm. my singer is only 33 years old, Mm. 33. So Black Cat is 33 years old. Mm. This is how I managed to stay on my feet. Every single one of these members, they were like a, Paul holding this building. It's not only me. Mm. I didn't teach anybody to sing. I didn't teach anybody to play. What I did, I supported them. <laughs> But you bring your experience. Yes. That's what you do teach them, exactly. right? They can't do it without you. Yeah. The power is there. And it's the experience is here. I I was I'm I was I'm gonna say it later in the interview, but but I was thinking of Black Cats, it's not just a band, it's like an academy. <laughs> it's like you're te- you're you're bringing I mean, you're basically a farm system. You're teaching people to become very, rock very stars, true. pop stars. Very I mean, true. and it's working. You know, yes. they all leave black cats and they have amazing careers. You know, uh, and again, selflessly based on you. L- let me ask you about the context of this by going back. You were talking about your father a moment ago. Let me ask you a little bit about your story. Um, Iran of the the late 50s, 1960s. You were in a family that fostered and honored artistic talent. Your dad is this multifaceted artist. I know I, I know he was uh, involved in the military, et cetera, as well, but um, he made a big name in cinema in Iran. And you said something once that I thought was so beautiful. You said um, he was, I think if I can translate it correctly, he, you said he was 100 years ahead of me and my brothers. Yeah. I love that. It's so beautiful. What what a thing to say about someone. What does it mean? What do you mean when you say that? It, it's true. Because what he did at his time, look, if I show you on my phone, I have that, saved it. It's a poster of a play he wrote like 75 years ago. And then 
it's a, it's an opera hmm. that all the all the players are singing to one another words and music by him direction of the play by him written the play by him and then he was acting in a two so it was a one man show wow and 118 artists on stage 75 years ago yeah i was like just a kid mm -hmm. he would take me everywhere wherever he went i was side by side and then I saw him. Four o'clock in the morning, he was up, going to army. He, he was an, a colonel in the army. But all his time that he had to himself, he was writing like lyrics, songs. He was a great santo player wow. himself. He made his own santo, different shape. Mm. And then played that like piano. Uh, he, he had pedal, like piano, for the sound too. He made it all by himself. Mm. And, it, and we, as his kids, were looking at him at very young age. Yeah. So, so. Did how, you want to be? Did you want to be him? We couldn't. We loved yeah. to, yeah. but we never compared ourselves with him. Never, because. He really showed us what would happen if you start. You can't be in time, uh, actually, to tell you the truth. Lots of people say, we're going with time. Time is so fast. Mm. Nobody can keep the time that fast. Time is going. What you can do, get somebody who can share that instant mm. that time is passing so help you you know how many people help me without them knowing that they're helping me like people who i brought into the band mm. a better drummer a better guitar player a better songwriter a better singer like shamo izade was playing saxophone mm. in black cats flute clarinet he was one of the musicians. Just wait, wait a second, though. Just back to your dad, because I mean, he's a almost a mystical character. The way you're describing him, yes. in, that multi-talent. Um, what What would you say you most learned from him? Is there something that you carry with you in your practice every day that you you would say you learned from your dad? Very much so. What is that? Because. We were, uh, I mean, I was just studying at the School of Music. Mm. But when I got back home every day, when I uh, went back from school, I saw him writing music. So I always uh, was curious how he's doing it, like doing this. Work Do ethic. Yes. Yeah. I bet and you he was on time. On time, <laughs> yes. On time, yeah. and he, he, he was actually a nervous person hmm. you could see it that he couldn't sit anywhere steady not sitting on this chair changing sitting on the other all of a sudden he was moving all the time right. all the time and um, he was my really role model hmm. in life not only in music but in humanity too hmm. like how can be a good artist without humanity? Yeah. These things happen with a good musician. Well, it sounds like he did a good job with in, in terms of bring, was he dis in bringing you up? Did he, was he disappointed that you didn't go into cinema? No, no, no. I, I, he, he that's was, exactly what I'm trying to okay. say. As soon as I told him that I don't want to be in movie, although I, he had to spend a lot of money on me in London, and then he said, what do you want to do? I said, I want to go back to music school. He said, go ahead. Wow. Go do it. Wow. That, that's the things that 
we it was so roshan fact very yeah. very much very wise yeah and uh, very giving mm. I, i mean there are things that are good say about my father that very seldom very rarely you come across in life like what like like doing things for others not for yourself yeah. whatever there is a But good that's thing like you Maybe these you are took that these from your are dad. the things yeah he inspired us mm. with when i talk about my dad is not my dad hmm. is everybody's dad like he was inspiring so many people uh. around him in movies in lyrics in and we were watching him as as father and following him no everybody says we have lots of followers we didn't know what followers mean yeah. at the time yeah. Yeah. now yeah. we think well wow. well it wasn't a number on a screen <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it was humans but i mean that time where you then choose music and you start to foster this they start to build these bands and this and and the beginnings of black cats a couple of months ago uh Chapo, you 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 posted a photo on your instagram of a black cats a gig I, maybe it was a tv show or something you were doing i think it was probably late 60s early 70s you're on drums yeah um your brother shaharam and ebby and a bunch of other famous musicians who are household names are, are are standing around the microphones describe the vibe take us back to that that moment well, well that was a tv show Uh, named uh, Studio B. That's in Tehran, obviously. Uh, in Tehran. Yeah. And then we were playing live music. Just imagine at that time, the sound, the lighting, that was the first Persian music video. It was a video. Wow. It had a story. And then we were acting. I don't know if you watch that scene that we are playing car yeah yeah and uh, then yeah. the singer is singing uh house of the rising song yeah yeah from the animals, the animals. Yeah, yeah so when they say first um music video was made by michael jackson <laughs> we said what is a music video is a music played with a story so We did it actually. There was a house in Norway. They called the rising sun. And I spent the work of many of the boys. But I know who I want. But you guys, you were also singing. Um, I mean, there's these videos of Farhad Abbey singing in English. Yes. And and uh, th I have a theory about that. I want to ask you about that. Oh, you want to say something? Go ahead. Oh, uh, yes. That's exactly what was the difference between Black Cats and other groups. Mm. We were singing exactly English words, yes. not Farsi. Well, here, here's here's my th here's what I want to say about that, because I on the face of it. You would say, "Oh, okay, so there's not enough confidence in the Iranian Persian pop scene at the time, so they're singing English stuff of English bands, etc." But to me, if I think more about it, I think that was the beginnings of a very confident, strong Persian music business that, of course, would be cut off at the knees in, in 1979. Yeah. But the fact that you were singing in English was actually quite empowering, and if I mean, it it becomes a question of what ifs, what ifs, what ifs, you know, if the revolution hadn't happened. But if I think about today, and I think about, um, you know, I don't pick any, an artist like Shakira, who obviously is a Latin artist, but sings in English and becomes a massive worldwide hit, we don't really have that in Iranian artists. And it's a shame because we have extremely talented Iranian artists, but usually, you know, they're singing in Persian. And I wonder if, things would have been different because you guys were actually doing stuff in English, you know, that the entire world would be able to relate to. Exactly. Uh, but uh, this is exactly what I was trying to say. Okay. And, uh, you know, before after, I cut you after, off. After, <laughs> after when I went back 
uh, from London to Iran, I stayed in Iran. I didn't go back. Mm. So my English started to fade in a way. No, 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 no. <laughs> come on. Your English honestly, is great. Honestly. Yeah. honestly. Um, but the thing is, when we started playing Beatles songs, we did Beatles songs in lyrics and in music. Mm. Drumming had to be exactly the same as the drummer, the bass player, the guitar player. Trying to copy the accents like an English guy, like Paul McCartney mm. or John Lennon, all these people. Mm. Who, by the way, were trying to sound American. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody was trying to sound like something else. Yeah. And Farah was singing great chores. At the time, we had As Asli Chahar mm. in Iran, which was Americans, uh, they were there, like officers, helicopter yeah. uh, pilots, all this. And they married Armenian girls because of the religion. They were all Christian. Mm. So they were marrying mostly with Armenian uh, uh, women. And then their children, were being brought up in Iran. They had no place to go because they were speaking English. Now, we were the only right, band right. playing live English music with English words. So we got very popular among them. So we had them. And then when I look from the stage, I saw lots of people are singing with us in English. They looked like Persians, that's funny, but and then I found out they were all Americans. <laughs> so that was my idea. How can we just be, uh, uh, just take Persian Persians yeah. into the world? Yeah, yeah. Persian and do you players. think? Do you think that if the revolution doesn't happen? and you're continuing on that path, that you, that black cats would actually be writing songs in English as well as, as part, yeah. yeah, well actually we did at the time. Uh. Like if you uh, see our first album, there is an English, English song, song, Sacrifice. That was made by my uh, son-in-law in English. He sang it himself. He was our bass player. Hmm. And then he said, Dai, because I was his Dai, Dai, I don't know in English what they call it, brother in law. Uh, 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 nephew? Nephew. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some nephew. Yeah. So he said, I, I don't want my voice on the tracks because I'm not a singer. I said, You're the songwriter. You are the lyricist of the song. So why not sing it? Hmm. He said, okay, I sing it and then give it to a singer to sing it. So when he gave me the song, I put it on the album with his voice. And then, you, believe me, when we were at the concert, everyone was shouting, sacrifice, sacrifice. Oh, wow. That was the only English song wow. we had on the album. So we started trying, we did one album, our first album with Shahram singing as Black Cat's uh, singer, was Bye Bye. The words were written by me in English. Sharon was singing. Sharon was singing. It's amazing. I've seen there. There's a video yes. of Sharon and All the songs and Abby singing are in, in English. English. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All the songs in that album, the first album, with Sharon, all in English words. period of the 1970s yeah. like now we're if we go into the mid 70s the late 70s before the revolution right before the revolution it you know I wasn't around I, I, it feels like a when I hear about it when I 
it, it just feels like a, a magical time of fertility for Persian music, like that something was happening there. I don't know if I'm overstating that or romanticizing it. You tell me, but between the beginnings of people who have become icons like Gugush and Darius oh, began. Abbey, began, et cetera, yeah. and then the young Farah Maris puts out his first album, that, that yeah. type of thing, it really feels like something was happening yes. at that point. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, exactly. That, that time was the beginning of, uh, it was a renaissance. You know, it was l like a revolution thing right. in music. Everybody, like Vigan, started playing guitar and sing. That was looked a little weird <laughs> because for English, for Persian singers like Banan, like uh, uh, lots of good, f famous, popular mm. singers, they were all sitting, singing, and then Vigan standing with a guitar on his shoulder. So, a little by little, people started wanting mm. something different. And we were one of the uh, pioneers yeah. to start this type of music, playing uh, international music. We were playing Italian, French. Farad was singing French. Jamal, the other, the bass player, was singing Italian music. So we were looking, making this group play international music and opening way for becoming international music. Oh, it's a funny day, every day, but it's all the same. Now is my turn to say, and I say, your holiday Million of eyes can see Yet to while I so fine When there's someone else isn't me It's unkind It's unkind be, 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 be. So with that type of music, we could play Persian music mm. and then bring it into the world. Yeah. And we did it. We did it. We started like Jom E Farah did. The type of music started changing completely in Persian music. We again started differently, but we were trying to keep it in an English way, in yeah. original yeah. way, like English words. That, that's what we did. Uh, uh, I say something about you. Thank you. No, what do you want to say? Jian Jian. Yeah. I've done lots of, lots of uh, interviews, mm -hmm. lots of uh, like TV stars. Mm -hmm. uh, like nobody asked the questions you did today. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm very honest on this, very honest. So it brings out a passion in me mm. to say things that I never said on, a, on an interview. I'm honored. And I didn't do it because... We're not finished, by the way. I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> You're not finished. Thank don't God. Exactly. Thank God. No, thank <laughs> God. First of all, you have gone through the things that I've done. Yes. Half of the things you said today, I've forgotten about myself, honestly. And all of a sudden, I remember, what do you see? Why, you just took me back years in my career. You're very kind. Uh, I thank you for that. And then, now, today, maybe I, I don't have that sort of a memory that I had before you start losing your memories. Thank God I have enough memories, mm -hmm. but still, uh, when you age, especially in, in, in the way I'm doing it, like bringing young uh, mm -hmm. people into the band, 
today, uh, Jian Jian, you know what I did? After 65 years, I brought, like when this uh, rising happened in mm-hmm. Iran. The uprising, yeah. All the girls, young girls, doing what is really, nobody can't, nobody could even imagine yeah. the thing that the world was watching yeah. in Iran. So I thought to myself, now, after 65 years of having only black cats been known for guys band, after all these years, I decided, why not bring a girl side by side with the male singer and make a tour, like passing torch tour, from me to someone, not as a singer only, but as the manager, as the guy who can do what I did, not only think about himself as the black cat singer or the music director Mm -hmm. or the songwriter, but just make space for others. Bring them, make more young singers, young players, and let this name stay. Not for when I'm alive, for when I'm gone. So, because there will be time for my new singer to become my age. Mm. I want him to sort of have the same, same history in his time. So he can say when he gets to 80 years old, say the same thing, say Steve Blackett is alive. With, with you there, there, you've actually brought a couple of people with you here today, and with your blessing, I'm going to ask you a few more questions, but then we'll bring them in Thank because you. I, I, it's a, it's a beautiful thing you've just said about passing the torch and and the first female member of Black Cat. So I do want to get there. Okay. Before we do, I, you know, there's some, there's a, th- a few things I, I have to. I mean, you, uh, when that revolution happens, there were some people left right away. Uh, uh, understandably, you know, um, um, some people felt like they had they had to. Some people were away and didn't come back. Um, others, you know, ended up staying for a while and having to stay silent and and uh, not create music for a long time. Um, tell me what you were going through when everything changes overnight. There's a strange part of your story where I've heard you talk about the fact that you continue to work in radio and TV for a while, for yes. in fact, for a few years into the early 80s, mid 80s, by the time you leave. Uh, and I wonder what you were doing because they couldn't, you, you know, you couldn't play music. So so tell me about that time because I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it must have been incredibly painful. And then that was a horrible time, horrible. And then because I left after five years when the revolution happened, yeah, I stayed in Iran as a player in radio station like national radio and uh, uh, symphony orchestra but nothing was the same All right. because they said you don't play you just come as a, an employee you stay the day you go home you don't play no instruments so it was yeah it was now you say painful it was really painful just seeing that you are uh, you're in a straitjacket di- you, you're, you're, you're yeah you actually you dying little by little you see all the musicians were like this we were like dying every day a little by little we're going down the music is fading away and we had to cling on it by ourselves at home mm. play at home the right music at home but nobody can hear it and it was really disasters what was the moment where you that decided you yeah this is it i'm leaving i left home i didn't even think about my house and my wife was out i sent my wife to to austria vienna Mm -hmm. with my daughter and then daughter went to 
America with my uh, other brother mm -hmm. with, who was uh, in Texas. So I was alone back in Iran. خدا میدونه چی به من گذشته دلم از همه از خودم شکسته هرچی که بوده باشیده از هم مثل یه بغزه در هم شکسته خودم در آرا بستم و رفتم تو خواستی اما من بر نکشتم نفس کشیدم با نفس تو من سنگ نبودم آخر and there was this revolution yeah I was by myself so I thought I want to see my daughter I want to follow my career yeah so Iran is not the place for it without telling anybody I just got the ticket and left Iran mm. the house was there the car was there so all of a sudden, they saw Shabal vanished. <laughs> they, yeah. they didn't know where I was. I went to Vienna and then to London. I waited for my green card. And then 1986, I went to America. And when you come to LA, right? Yes. It's not, it's not uh, Terangeli's yet. I mean, it's, it's the, there's some people who've moved there but you're essentially going somewhere where, I mean, you're known in Iran, right? Yeah. You're kind of a star. People know who you are. All of a sudden, you don't have a job. You're in a new place. You're, 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 you, you're starting over um, in an incredibly unstable time where back home there's a war going on, there's been a revolution, you don't even recognize the country that you, you grew up in and you were a star in. Um, tell me about those first years in America. Well, as you said, I was, pretty known in Iran, popular. So when I entered America, it was like being born again. So nobody knew me. They called me Sharon's brother. And my wife got hurt. She said, I can't tolerate this. I, I go back to Iran wow. for one year and give you time to decide. You want to stay out of Iran? Or you want to come back meaning it felt that foreign that that it, exactly yeah. she said you were so much known to people everybody respected you you were making good money all of this now you gave it up for this nobody knows you we don't know what we're gonna do and I said okay give me just one year if I can't make it then I'll come back to Iran. Mm. And she said, okay, bye. She left America, she went back home. So I thought to myself, there is only one thing I'm good at, <laughs> and that's making the band. <laughs> so I started looking for musicians. What can I do? What a singer looking at? It just happened all of a sudden, just coming across somebody who was playing guitar and singing, good looking, Pirus was there. We, we were playing with Sharon in San Francisco. All of a sudden, I see there is a guy with a guitar playing with Susan Roshan. Mm. I said, okay, let me ask this guy if he wants to come to Los Angeles so we make a band. He's good looking, he's playing guitar, and he has a band of his own. Mm. Uh, and uh, I don't remember what he what would have known who you are, though, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you didn't, you weren't starting completely from scratch, no, everybody the, still no, knew you. The musicians, you yeah, know, those people who were in music, yes, yeah. but not ordinary people, right? No. Right. So, I asked him to come, and then he came. We started looking for musicians, and then I brought my two nephews one on bass, the other one on keyboard. So we just formed a band, and all of a sudden, in Glendale, a part of Los yeah. Angeles, Armenian uh, mostly live yeah. there, they asked me to come and have a band two nights a week, like Fridays and Saturdays, in Club 44. That was the club called mm. at the time. 
So we start the group there. And then uh, I thought to myself, okay, let's ask the owners if we can play 15 minutes, only 15 minutes before every singer that we were playing with. Nice. All right. So little by little, the people will start and asking the owners, why this band doesn't play more <laughs> at the beginning? So we started playing 30 minutes before singers. And then one hour. And were you called Black Cats yet? Black. Or you were. So the Black I Cats had been resuscitated. I started calling it Black Cats, yes. Were you scared? Were you freaked out at that time? Were yeah. you, you, yes. I mean, I thought to myself. Did you have money? I mean, I don't mean to, but did, did you have money? Were you able to bring uh, money uh, from I, your I own? Was playing, I was playing percussion with Sharon and other singers. Okay. Yes. I was working. You were doing okay. Uh, yes. yes. But. Comparing with what I was making in Iran, it was a joke. <laughs> but I thought to myself, either I do it and make it, or I go back. So that one year, that first year, at the end of the year, I was just having the band. So we started playing with others, plus our own music. I started just. Uh, recording our own album. So I had to work to make the money to do the album, which and was very expensive. Album pool mm. money. That was our first album mm. with peers. So, and then I tried my music writing. And then when the album came out, I saw, wow. At the time, there were few good singers and artists having big names yeah. in the market. But we did good. <laughs> we did good. Your wife was uh, won over. Yes, <laughs> she, she came over. Uh, yeah, she <laughs> it came was back. enough. Yes. A, yeah. She came back and then. Yeah, can I ask you something musical that has been said to me about that period and where Shisha Hash, the 6 8 music, starts to emerge in the, that LA sound, et cetera. Um, when I ask, what I, th I can't remember who it was. It was Sh Schubert or, or, or somebody who had, was explaining to me that part of where that music came from was out of necessity, that people wanted something lighter and happier. Is that is that true? In other words, that you felt there needed to be a mission that w that people had been through so much or were going through so much that they didn't want to listen to Ramgin, you know, kind of music. They wanted a um, a response to that. Is that where that music emerges from? That was a part of it. Okay. But uh, the, look, salsa music for Spanish is life. If you say talk bad about salsa, uh, Spanish person, right. you know what they do to you. Right, right. So I thought to myself, what is our music really? The core of our music. Mm is that type of music. Like, if just you try it, Xianjian, you try it, go to a Persian gathering, mm. and then just do this. <laughs> yeah. Just this. Yeah, yeah. On a piece of wood. Yeah. Okay. See what happens. Everybody starts moving. <laughs> just, and then I thought to myself, if Spanish are so touchy about their music, why not us? And then I met Pishu Pishu Mama. What does it say? First, it says, let's get out of Persian music. Yeah. And then gets to a part that it said, this Dambuladimbol Baba Velkonamanis. It means this type of music is in our blood, in our DNA. It's 
so interesting. You know, as a drummer um, uh, who grew up in the West, yeah. I'm 4'4". Four, four. Four, four. So when, when I'm playing with uh, Iranian guys who immediately are thinking in 6'8", it's very difficult for me. You know, I have to kind of adjust to that. that, 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 that and, and so it's, it's, a, it's confusing, you know. It's a, and the fact that Iranians clap on the one, yeah. you know, in Western music you clap on the two, <laughs> that, that, right? Yeah. And so it's, it's, a, it's a different world. But you're absolutely right that that, that is the common denominator. That, so you found the secret sauce, exactly. basically, right? Exactly. And 6'8 is a music figure. In rhythm, rhythm of course, figure. Yes. So even uh, Beethoven has it. <laughs> in classical music, they have it. But our music, what moves you really? Still, Jian Jian, no matter what they say about the music coming up, a different style of music mm -hmm. in Persian music, but we have only one biggest hit no musician can match with. And that's Baba Kara. <laughs> now, you can play any type of music, but this Baba Kara, as soon as you start, da -da 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 that makes revolution in the party. <laughs> yes. Everybody yes. goes crazy. Yes. Even the young ones, yes. who always talk about we do this type of music. No, we don't want to hear six eight music. You're not happy about that. You don't want anyone the, disrespecting the the Baba Kara. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. you know what happens <laughs> when that music starts, and they watch everybody go crazy. <laughs> they think to themselves, "We are wrong." Mm. That's what they think, and that's happened with Black Cats. Oh, you tried to do uh, only six eight. Wow. Our music was based on six. Right, but S has there been, been a time when you've tried something else and people got pissed off and we're like, "What are you guys doing? We don't want this." No, no, no. no. They loved it. Oh, they love no. But if, if you do something that isn't six eight, no, no, no. We did four four. Uh huh. We did. They're okay with that. Oh yeah. Okay. Because uh, actually, we have four four music. Yes. Like Pish Pisha Mama starts with four four, and then goes to six eight. Da 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 da. Da, 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 yeah, there, there da, da, you go. Da, da. There you go. Yeah, yeah. You see, and then it goes to a rock and roll. Rock is that name? Rock and roll. Rock, rock. And so it's a rock and roll. Right. And the Irunisham <laughs> Khub Baladi. And that. then it goes to six. Eight. Yes. So you know, that I started doing few songs like this, starting fast, going to slow part, because. Persian dance. Mm. Now, most of the dancing, Persian dancing, I see, is like going to gym. <laughs> it doesn't have those type of moves that especially our women dance. Uh -huh. When they do Baba Karam style, then you see the difference. Even Shakira and all these dancers. They got nothing on us? <laughs> no, they see them. Uh -huh. They say, "How can we do that dance? <laughs> it's so beautiful, so beautiful." And so I thought to myself, "Why not stay on this type of music more? Mm. Others are doing what they're doing. Let's we keep the core of our culture yeah, in music." Yeah. <laughs> How do you, if, if, if that, so then through the 90s and into the 2000s, I mean, it's this amazing story of not just the resuscitation of Black Cats, but massive hits, partly fueled by your ability to find talent. What, what, do you, what do you look for? What do you most look for in somebody that you want to bring on board? You got two young people here here on the other side of the glass today. Because I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's not just their ability to sing well or no. perform well. It's no. something else. What yeah. is it? What do you look for? It's personality. Personality. 
how they behave. How important is to be a good musician? Mm. How passionate you are. You must know Sara Nayani. Uh, 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 Sara was on the show recently. Yes. She teaches singing. And Sara said she believes passion is more important than talent. Ta yes. And you believe no, that too? Yes. Talent is limited. Everybody has talent, but limited. It's like a rubber band. You stretch it, mm. you let go, it goes back to mm. where it was. Mm. No matter how much you stretch it, as soon as you let go, it goes back there. So that's what is uh, given to you. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, look at trophy, what they call it, trophy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like given to you. Yeah. That's what talent is. You start with that. You get that. So, Hopefully. It's yeah. not from you. Mm -hmm. It's from somebody in your uh, family, mm -hmm. maybe your aunt, maybe your uncle. Mm -hmm. They were in music or ta talented. So you're not doing anything with that. Now, what you got to do with your talent now is knowledge, backing it up. Work ethic. I mean, work ethic and your personality. Mm. Who is performing it? You don't have to be beautiful. You have to have that charisma, that... Uh, that passion. And where do you see that? Does somebody come in for an interview or something and you and you can tell? Or do you have to see them perform? What is it? Where do you see that charisma? Uh, the way they talk, mm. the way they move, the way they touch the instrument, or how they say the words, the lyrics. Do they understand every word, mm. the meaning of the word? To, to sort of pass it to, to the listener. So mostly, uh, uh, that's m my story, my, my way of choosing yeah. singers, especially singers. First, they have to have personality. Like somebody, just imagine Sammy Davis Jr. Mm. He didn't have a look. No, he had a lot of personality. And talent, too. Talent. A guy could yeah. play the drums, exactly. he, could, he could sing, he could do so, all kinds of things. Yeah. You see, he has talent mm -hmm. showing, but he really had that personality. Doing dance, step dance, you love to watch him. Yeah. He was playing the drums, you love to watch him. Yeah. He had that, and he showed it right. Then, all of a sudden, you find that he only sings. For a long time, he was only a singer. He didn't play instruments. Yeah, yeah. He just played the instrument just to show I'm talented in many ways. Yeah. But he was known as a singer. Yeah. So, but his personality, he was the most beautiful woman married him. Blue Angel. Mm. They called him Blue Angel. Uh, they, they called her Blue Angel. That they said that beautiful, <laughs> and then he divorced her after a year or two. Right, right. <laughs> he's got a lot of personality. <laughs> he's, 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 he could divorce the most beautiful girl. <laughs> no, uh, he, uh, I, you, I, I get it. I mean, I and and you, you have done it so profoundly in terms of um, finding people and and. It's weird, um, uh, Chapel John, because you, you, I'm curious how you walk the line between bringing Kamran and Human or, or Kamiar or somebody, somebody in and letting them express themselves musically because you can't, you can't just put them in a box, but they still have to maintain a fidelity to you and the Black Cat sound and what you, so it's an interesting line that you have to walk, right? Because... Right. Uh, and and that's again something that I, you've obviously been very successful at. You tell me this, Jean John. Kamyar has a style now in Persian music. Mm. When he was in Black Cats, he had to do what Black Cats wants. 
but I saw in him he wasn't enjoying that only that doing that he wanted to put some of his own ideas in black cat music and then I talked to him I, I don't know if he said it mm -hmm. in your uh, uh, he may have uh, tell me in yeah. your interview with him that he didn't want to go he didn't want to leave black mm -hmm. cats I said come come Yarjan you're actually too good for black cats you have a style of your own go do what you're good at mm -hmm. I can have another black cat singer but you have a style now Persian music needs this different style Kamran Homan have their own style Kamiya has his style Sami Beghi has his style no matter how many people like them doesn't matter how many people it matters that there are different styles in Persian music just coming into sorry coming yes I'm, I'm first time in the studio I guess <laughs> <laughs> and first time working with so, the microphone <laughs> so now what I did I tried to bring different type of music style of music into Persian music <laughs> Can I pay you a compliment that was said by somebody that we, we both uh, respect? Uh, earlier today, uh, if I, I, I don't think he would m mind me telling you this, um, I called Bob Akamini because I had been with him not too long ago and I mentioned you and he put his hand on his heart and he said, I, I love him, I adore him. I love him so too. I called him today and said, um, put it into words because I'm speaking to uh, dear chef uh, today in an interview. What, what is, when you put your hand on your heart, what was it that you, and you know what he said? You want to take a, well, you don't have to guess, I'll tell you. He, he said um, he respects, he gives respect to all his um, musicians, even the young ones that just come in, get this respect from Shahbal Shahpare. And it's the greatest gift that they that they can get. And I thought that, um, I hope you feel amazing about him saying that because it's such a wonderful thing to say about someone. But it also a wonderful quality that you clearly have that means so much that that's why these people are around you. That's why young people, you don't hear people out there going, that was that sucked, that was horrible, but rather, you know, um, it was a joyous experience. It's, it's my honor to have somebody like Bob Beckhamini really to talk like that about me I, 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 it happened just one night <laughs> just for one night you told me that Bob I mean he was in black Kamiar, <laughs> Kamiar and Rana yeah. just one night there were part of black cats and the next day we decided why doing this when we can do something better like you do your style right Rana right. will do her style and Black has his own. So that's what we did. And the three of us made it through. Kamyar, uh, uh, Baba Gamini, and Rana. Kamyar was in Black Cats. Rana Mansur, she's She's great. Rana Mansur, yeah. yeah. Baba is Baba, Baba Gamini. Yeah. Um, about giving respect. If I want to be respected, I have to respect others. That's simple. Mm -hmm. That's simple. Now, if I bring somebody in black cats, I've heard somebody, some people say, Shabal, whoever he brings, he starts just uh, bragging about them, talking about them. I said, I'm not that stupid to bring somebody into black cats and not saying good thing about him. Hmm. 
why should I do that? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Why so, wouldn't you promote the but, person but, but, you brought in? But, yeah. uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, but I wait on him. I give him some time to see, am I really having the right person? Mm. I can make mistakes easily. And I believe it, that I can make mistakes. So I give myself some time to every single person who comes into Black Cats, players or singers. And then I find, uh uh, I can do something else and he can do something different. Mm -hmm. Not just uh, put him out of the band right. and or bring him down. No, I won't do that. I'm still in touch with every person, every musician who left Black Cats. We are still friends. I respect them. They respect me. And we, we love what we did together. Mm. And we love uh, uh, the separation too. Because it was the right time. <laughs> such a it's been such an honor honestly getting to, to talk to you I've been so looking forward to this you. uh, your perspective your wisdom your experience the journey you've taken it's just it's such a joy for me let, let, let me ask you uh, as we wind up uh, before I let you go I mean you you talked earlier about passing the torch you know I don't know how you what regimen you have uh, how many times a week you go to the gym or what it is but you look great but you're, you know, nobody's getting younger. Um, you can't do it forever. How, how do you feel about getting older? Uh, lots of people, they ask me, Shabok, how come you don't get old? <laughs> I said, I don't find time to get old. <laughs> you have to pass time to get old. I, I, I'm really so busy from early in the morning. I love music but you're a young soul and if you're a young soul does that mean that's right are you freaked out about getting old uh, no 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 you're not I, scared I, of it i love my age i love my age why do you love your I, age I, I, i'll tell you even uh, I'm, I'm very true saying mm -hmm. this it's from my heart and the people who know me they've heard it me saying it many times that even no matter how much money they can pay me to take me one day of my life back. No, I won't sell it, no matter how much it is. Mm. Why? Because just I imagine if they take me one day back and they, they say, okay, relive this day. I thought to myself, if, what if that one day will be really bad. I wouldn't take that risk. I've lived every second of my life the way I want it. I'm enjoying it. And as you said, it's not forever. Nobody is forever. So why not enjoy every second of my life passing it? Mm. Passing it. I love to pass my next second of my life. I love passing it. Look at you. Oh, yes. I've been passing it like I've been passing it for 84 years. I love it to become 85. If it ends, it ends. Okay, ends. Everybody. Everybody is like that. Yeah. So there is nothing so special about me to sleep forever. <laughs> so, but I'm, I'm telling the truth. It's so rewarding to myself that I feel life in there. I love my wife, I love my daughter, 
and I love my music. I talked to my wife, to my daughter, many times. This is one thing. Please don't challenge it. Hmm. You lose. <laughs> you lose. Why? Because everyone has to make satisfaction for his own soul. Feel deep inside. Yeah. Yeah. I do it, Jean uh, I really enjoy. Like we have a show. Yeah. I'm so excited <laughs> about the mistake we make. I even love that. even about the mistakes we make. Why? Because we won't make the same mistake next time. <laughs> no. We learn together. I push. Sometimes the mistakes are the best part of the show oh, too. Yes. <laughs> to be to be fair. <laughs> it's the most memorable moment. Um, well, you're good at it, John. John, you're good at what you do. Thank you. I really respect you, and uh, I wish I'd known you uh, very sooner. Well, uh, I'm I'm thrilled about this now. Uh, honestly, and I and honestly not because you just uh, talk so much uh, uh, good thing about me. No, it's not like that. But you're good at what you do. I respect you because of that. Thank you. Good people, you know, big people. We've talked so much. But bringing out something <laughs> from the next person you're talking about, that gives you a different feeling. Uh, thank you very much to give me this opportunity. And You know what my so philosophy is? If I invest, if the person I'm interviewing can tell that I've invested, then they'll invest. That's exactly yeah. what I feel like in yeah. my career. Yeah, that's it. And uh, you learn, you learn from people who are good in their career. Mm. You learn from them. I don't have to become a, uh, a, 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 a spokeswoman, a spokesman, uh, or uh, a, a radio figure, but I learn from it. Mm. I say, if he's good in his uh, career, why shouldn't I be in my career? Go work. Go learn. Knowledge is something. Wisdom is something else. Mm. You're born with wisdom. You learn knowledge. So now... When I see somebody with wisdom and knowledge, I know he is like getting better every day. This is how it is. I love that you're excited about the next second. Oh, that's what I. Love. Yes. I love that. Yes. That's fantastic. Yes. What a great way to Every, look at life. Lots of people are afraid of their next second. I love it. No matter how it is, I want to see it. Yeah. What happens tomorrow night? What will happen tomorrow night? I'm excited about it. Oh, we do our best to have a best show, but if anything goes wrong, we say, oh oh. Watch it next time. Mm. <laughs> so it's learning. You know, I anything can happen tomorrow. That's the thing. Exactly. That's the thing. That's that's the one. Uh, not to put a spoiler on it, but I, uh, you also don't know. I I've learned that you have to live every second because you really don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. 
whether it's to you or the world or the economy or the environment or whatever it is it's we you know that's the one truism in life right yeah. you don't know what's going to happen exactly and and some and it always surprises you, you what know? happens happens what happens happens that's it. thank you so yeah. much thank you thank you very much and uh i say it one more time after 65 years i brought uh, i'm honored to have a girl singer in the band is it okay if we bring her in uh, if if, if, is you it, like. if, if yeah. is it okay she's here and my new singer songwriter and uh, music director as well why don't you introduce them and that let's bring them in we'll just do uh, this live right now. let's bring this chair over here Rohamja, and and uh we'll even just share the microphone for now and yeah they, they can share this one yeah yeah T tell us who we're about to meet uh, she's a very young girl she is from a very talented family as you can see she Go is ahead, beautiful Hasta. you can sit here <laughs> and um, my male singer is very talented very educated songwriter piano player violin player singer music director he's been studying in armenia what do you know armenia in music they're famous about yes. having good music yes fantastic singers yes. good musicians his name is Aydin. um and uh, Aydin hasti. and hasti hasti is the name of the female singer but i know everybody is watching who is she mm. but i can't promise what they see they will be surprised all right well they are here uh, now sat at the studio in the studio um okay. you've just been on the other side of the glass listening to uh, uh the pop father yes. um f first of all i'm imagining uh, as well as you've gotten to know Chappelle John, he probably said things in that interview that you, you didn't even know. Yes. So first of all, hi, and thank you for having us today. So it's 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 been an honor to be every day with Chappelle Chappelle. It's like like it's 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 a bingo in our life. Like like being being in an academy with no scholarship. Right. Yes. It is like an so, academy, yes. isn't it? Right? Academy, academy, and hundred percent paid by. Uh, honor. How long have you been in Black Cats now? This is my very first stage. And what did you know of Black Cats before? <laughs> I mean, I was technically raised by... Uh, the, okay, let me start with this. So, I was very, 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 very uh, raised by a restricted and disciplined family in terms of classic and classic music only where were you in, in iran in iran no. yes in tehran so uh, i do have like classical and and uh, uh, ethnic uh, musical background in my family and we had that restriction classic music and only classic music and the only pop <laughs> classic music we could have hear me and my brother was black cats because my parents were identifying not only my parents, all the musicians identifying Black Cats as one and only classic era mm -hmm. creator of pop. And what was it like music. for you when you uh, finally hooked up with so, uh, the Ostar? After having your entire life falling in love with Black Cats song, first kiss with Black Cats song, first separation with Black Cats <laughs> song, your, your birthday with Black Cats song. Marriage, divorce. <laughs> <every other. laughs> and suddenly being here, and having the honor to work with him so it's it's not a coincidence mm -hmm. there is a reason behind it so and i call it gravity and when we were talking about hasti i'm going to bring it in, in, in a moment because i i definitely want to hear from you but when we were talking about um when i was reflecting on all the different musicians who've been even been on this show mm -hmm. and who've brought up chapel's name and talked to, about him as a mentor yes. um, talk to me a bit about that like what what even in the short time that you've been involved, what what it has meant for you to to be working with him. Chapel has a great sentence, 
and it's been the top of the line wisdom that I got from him. So every day I'm I'm getting more and more and more, even even when he's not giving me, I'm just absorbing, mm. like a sponge. But the golden one, so far, is one of the sentence you remember, Shahbal John. I know how to be young, but yet you don't know how to be old. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Just imagine every day is like that. I'm, I'm learning how to be old. Yeah, the Black Cats Academy. Yes. Um, Hasti June, let me bring you in here. I mean, this is, um, how did you feel when you were listening to that interview just now and, and Chapel Chapel is talking about you as, for the first time in 65 years, being the first um, female now member of Black Cats? I'm just beyond honored. To, that's the first thing. I, I have so much pride that he trusts me with this and to be given this responsibility it's i can't put it to words like the pride you feel and he's just such an inspiring person he's so nurturing and for someone to believe in you that has this foundation that has the experience and the knowledge that he does it's it's magnificent and i ask how did you where did you find hasti shaba her mother <laughs> is a great singer. Okay. The whole family, very talented. I was talking about personality. Yes. She, she has personality. She has really good talent. Uh. She hears music right. These are the things that I see in them. She's young and educated. What is your... Um What's your background in in terms of uh, with Black Cats? I mean, are you a um, were you also a fan as a kid? Growing, well, you're still young, I'm, I guess. <laughs> but uh, as a younger kid, knowing Black Cats. Yeah, I mean, I grew up on a lot of Persian music um, because obviously my family, my mom, she would sing a lot, and Black Cats definitely. We grew up with so many of their songs to this day just last week in the car with my friend we were <laughs> jamming to it to, um to a dodd and it's just it's always it's it's one of those things i think it never gets old it, to this day and parties and birthdays like with like people my age like in their early 20s we listen to their songs we have so maybe the most fun it's amazing right yeah it's amazing how it stayed yeah and and what do your friends make of uh, your the fact that you're in black cats now they're <laughs> they're really excited. Um, they all texted me today. They're like, "Have a good flight. Like, good luck. Like, you got this." I'm like, "Okay, yeah, no." They're um, they all love Shafal. They all know him. They they love his work. Everyone knows Black Hats. Everyone um, idolizes them. And for you, the I know it's a relatively new partnership, but for you, um, what what has been the best part of being in proximity? to a chapeau chaperet so far? I think just all the experience and the knowledge and wisdom he has, you can see it. Just every rehearsal, every conversation, it, it just seeps through, you know, like as Aydin says, it's like a sponge you absorb. So give and me an example. Like think of, like, take a moment. Think of something that you didn't know before that you've learned by being around this man. So when... Um, I mean, I've been singing forever, but uh, but obviously I don't have like the foundation that Aydin or Shapo, like they both are so knowledgeable and so experienced. And I think one of the things I guess I could note off the top of my head is uh, the way I would pronounce words <laughs> or like, you know, like maybe not finish my words when I was singing and they caught on to it was something that like, I know Shabal says like she has a perfect ear. I didn't catch that. And he pointed that out. He was like, you need to finish the word like, like you're what? saying. Like what? Give an example. Um, like, how would I say? Like, like, for example, if I say like, it's if the end of like a sentence and a verse is like am, like I would just kind of like, and I just, I just like maybe like mutter it and it's like you have to like be strong with your words you have to say it and that's just like one like it's like a little piece of like okay like they know something they hear something and they pass it on to you and it makes all the difference in how you sound you know so and Idine, you're going to be the the your the torch is being passed to you as a band leader as well is that what's going on here uh, <clears throat> it's not that easy 
So it's well, easy to say. Well, I, I yeah, to me, it's I'd very be terrified heavy. if I were you. But yeah, and I'm so honored. Uh, yes, and uh, even saying yes is so scary. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, 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 I'm trying, and uh, I have the hundred percent passion and desire to. I mean, I, I guess Shabu uh, John, you can't learn how to be. If you're going to pass that, that that torch, you, you you've got to be signing on to this for uh, for a long time. I mean, you're not you you, you can't leave Definitely. in a couple of years. No, and no, and you can't tell them to like with Kamiar. Uh, uh, you know, it's time to move on. But wait buddy. a second, not a, not a, not as a singer. So as a singer, I made a promise to myself: one album and one tour. That's it. I'm just gonna step back wow. and be Shah Bal Shah Bal. Wow. Because, because that was actually our, our very first conversation that we have in Beverly Hills, uh, like close to Shah Bal's home. And uh, we had in the cafe, I, uh, I told Shah Bal, one of my dreams is if I walk in Black Cats, if you give me that honor, let me be Shah Bal. So you're gonna have to, I mean, I think. I feel bad talking about you as if you're not here, but I think one of his most incredible qualities is the selflessness to be able yes. to, when we were talking about early in the interview, like, a, you know, if one I'll of, let the other the guy play the drums. Lessons. I mean, that's a, that's something that you're going to have to definitely to take on. And, I'm, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm learning every day. So. Yeah, yeah. Musicians have egos. Oof. Oh, uh, I have my own ego. <laughs> uh, but there is one thing. I might make mistakes mm -hmm. then I stop right there if I feel that I made a mistake someplace that's why what I'm doing this time like having somebody in in place of big stars of Persian music like Farha uh, Shadow Drani Andronik no, Sir Cheshmalza, mm. the big names. Yeah. He has a big responsibility because not only like doing what I've been doing for the younger generation, but he, he should really show to his, the people who are coming after mm -hmm. him. The next generation. Show yeah. them mm -hmm. that he is capable of doing what it was done before for others by me or by anybody in the band wow so i've told him it's like game of thrones he's like uh, yeah, you know passing it's, this it's on it's to you exactly yeah. it, it he has to sort of show it's not only me mm. i do it because of music mm -hmm. this music has to go has to go forward Show must go and on. Show mm. must go on, exactly. And he's capable of doing it as far as the knowledge. But it's not easy. I'm saying it on this mic. That it's not an easy job yeah. to sort of show that you can push yourself back and put somebody else in there and just watch him grow. Mm. And people started forgetting about you. And you know it, you can feel it, that I'm off the stage now. Yeah. And he has to know that. F he fades away little by little. Somebody else starts shining. Yeah. He has to enjoy that shining, not worry about that disappearing in a way he's doing the black cats academy right now it's yes. we're, we're in and the I academy translated to the to, to quantum physics <laughs> once you're gonna <laughs> once you were the big bang and today you're the sun star wow. and watching the planet hey, expanding you. around you this mic today is we're gonna have to start charging for this you know this is a tutorial this is the black it, cats it academy I, I was just going to say it was a history for me not only an interview ah. no history of my life yes that so was that is could, that is the greatest honor I that's the greatest say, thing you could say thank you so i could say my next second is my life ah. and i sort of appraise them beautifully bringing it back 
the great Chappell Chappell here. Hasty eight Aydin. It is uh, the three of you. Uh, I thank you so much. I know that Likewise. it was an all night flight, you. and um, it's it's a great honor. And I thank you, thank you. and thank you. you guys will be back here sure. in uh, in all kinds of different uh, iterations for sure. And we'll Chappell John, honor. I uh, can't wait to continue to get to know you. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. It was nice Merci. meeting you. It was nice to be with you. Merci. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So Appreciate. All the fellas on the left side, aye, aye. On the fellas on the right side, aye, aye. Come on, put your hands up, hi, hi. Let me know if shit mine, mine. On the ladies on the left side, aye, aye. On the ladies on the right side, aye, aye. Come on, put your hands up, hi, hi. Let me know if shit mine, mine. Sing it. Aye, aye, hoshkin khanam. Ronde vubi asar kuchamam. Aye, 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 hoshkele. Nagu ne mishe, nagu mushkele. Bia. Aye, aye, hoshkin khanam. Uh, how good was that? Having Shapa, Shapare, and Black Cats here in the Rook studio. So much appreciated. This is full time for Rook for today. Our website for all things Rook related, rookmedia.com. Thanks to the amazing team who put this show together Super Parisa, Smart Pega, Savvy Roham. Bearded Omi, Talented Anahita, Methodical Kave. Thank you to all of you out there for supporting us and sharing our content. Please subscribe if you've not done so already. Thanks to Beat Mesh Events and Rumi Mode. Next week on the program, Kambis Hosseini and Ida Rost Gu. Find me on Instagram at Giango Meshi. And in the meantime, as ever, Mizumbashi. Dann muss ich gehen,